In this video, I'll be showing you how I was able to put this text behind me using the new object detection inside of Kaden Live. Let's get to it. So first things first, before we can actually use the object detection, first you want to go inside of settings down to configure Kaden Live. And on the side panel here, you want to go down to plugins. And then at the top, we have the speech to text and right next to it, we have object detection. Now to have this feature, you are going to need the latest version of Kaden Live or at least the 25.04 and up. So inside of object detection, you want to go down to install plugins to use. Simply click on install and let Kaden Live do its thing. You will need an internet connection and some patience. It's going to give you a pop-up about downloading certain assets and then installing them. So simply click on yes and then let it run. If ever you get an error, you can close out of Kaden Live, open it again, and then continue with the install. So once you're done installing the plugin, so I'll close out of this. This is an app image, just so I could show you that window. I'll go back inside of my own install. Once the plugin is installed, you're going to get a window of the sort. You have an option here to download the models. I downloaded several different models, different sizes, you could say. I usually use tiny just for speed and next to it, you have this uh, exclamation point here. If you click on it, then you have the link to the GitHub where you can see the models and more information about this. I'll leave a link down in the description of the manual page for this so that you can see how to install it. If you run into errors or the steps to follow. So the link is in the description and simply click on the link and go check out the manual for more information. Now for the device and the dropdown, if you have a dedicated GPU, you will have the option of your GPU in here. And if you don't see it, you can also click on this little button here. So you get more information. Uh, in my case, I don't have a dedicated GPU, so it's going to be CPU. Then we have this checkbox over here for offload video to CPU to save GPU memory. And I have it checked on. This is mostly when working on footage that is more than a couple of seconds long or segments that are a bit more than a couple of seconds long. Finally, there's the use system package only, but you can see only check this on if you actually know what you're doing. I think they mention it in here as well. So once all of this is done, apply then OK. And now you should have it available to you. You can close out of Kaden Live and open up again if ever you think something is wonky. It's recommended to use this inside of the project bin directly, although you can use it both inside of the project bin and on the timeline. For this, we're going to use it inside of the project bin. So I already grabbed a segment where I want this text to pop in and I have the animation here. And inside of the project bin, I have a zone selected and I only really need a couple seconds. So in this case, I think it's two seconds. Let's see, one, two. I only need two seconds. The longer it is, the more processing power. And again, I'm running on CPU and this is just for demonstration. One option I have is to cut just the segment that I need and then save it to the project bin as a zone. That way I know exactly where to make the cut. So here is how it works. It's recommended that inside of the clip monitor, so when you click on a clip inside of the project bin, you set an in point and an out point because you only really want to mask a segment, so not your entire video. If you want to mask the entire video, then if it's depending on how long it is, it's going to take X amount of time and X amount of processing power. So over here, I have this little segment and I know that it's around just a couple frames before I point behind me. So when the hands go down, I'm doing this because I don't want to mask more than necessary. Like I said, I could simply cut a piece out of this clip here and save it to the project bin, but I'll do it this way. So let's go here. I think it's shortly after I put my hands down. So around here, so I'll set an end point and then I'll jump back two seconds and set in. Oh, the end point, sorry, in two seconds. And I'll set this as the out point. So I have roughly two seconds here. And then inside of the effects and composition stack, at the very top, there is this new little icon, which is a square with a circle inside of it to create an object mask. Now, your icon might be different than mine, maybe depending on your operating system or your icon set, but it's basically right there inside of the effects and composition stack. Simply click on it you'll get this little window. You can toggle it on and off, by the way. So if ever you are you feel like you're stuck in a weird mode, maybe it's just that, toggle it off, toggle it on. So we have the option to create a new mask. So I'll click on that. And now it's extracting the video frames from that segment that was selected inside of the project bin. So it's not trying to do the entire video, just that in and out 
set of points. You can change the colors, obviously, over here. Uh, with the mouse hovering off of the clip monitor, you get some instructions. So you can simply left click, hold and drag to make a selection over the object. I found that this option has given like a few uh, hit or miss. It does grab the object, but it comes with some limitations, I'd say. The other option is to simply left click to add a point. You can hold down shift, left click again to add multiple points. And then you can hold down control and click to subtract areas. We'll take a look right now. So I'm going to left click on my forehead. If you just give it a moment, it's going to generate the mask image. Already it grabbed all of me, but if needed, you could have simply hold down shift and left click again to add another point. And then you have the control option where you would hold down control and click somewhere. I don't know if that's necessary, if it's gonna break anything, but let's go ahead and do it. And then you get a minus. Uh, point. So this is to deselect anything you don't want to have selected. You can also left click on these points and move them around. So I could simply move this very far away from the subject. All right. So putting it on the sofa uh, fixes the little uh, glitches that was happening. Next, you also have the option to scrub through the clip monitor, so the segment that you've selected, and now you can add other points, meaning if in your video, there is an object coming into the shot in that segment that you selected, but it comes in afterwards. You can simply move forward to where it shows up. So as you can see, we have a red dot down here, which is where we added the first points for the mask. And so I moved forward and now I can add more points. So now we have two red dots down here, right? So that's one way to give some follow up to your mask. So let's see over here, I'll add a subtract to the sofa so that it can just grab the, the subject here. You can see there's a small hole in the shirt, but that won't really be a problem for what I'm going to do. And once you have your selection and such, over on the right here, we have generate mask. Simply click on it. And now this is where the length of the selection that you have of the clip or segment of the clip that you've selected comes into play. In my case, I have Audacity in OBS running in the background. So one capturing the screen, one for sound, plus Caden Live doing this. So this might take a moment. All right, so that took a while. Once it's done, it's going to export the frames. All right, so we now have our mask. Now this is saved somewhere in the Kaden Live folder. So you can actually find the video file of this mask and you have several options. You can preview the mask, edit the mask, or apply the mask. I don't recommend clicking on anything other than apply mask. And you can also delete the mask and you can import mask. So if you had actually saved one of those masks in a different project, or you didn't delete it from the other project, you could import it. So if you had a mask of the same footage, you could technically just import it. So I'll click on apply mask, and now it applies it to a shape alpha. And basically you can't really see alpha inside of the clip monitor but on the timeline, you can, and there we have it. So how do I place the text behind me? Let me just grab this one, move it above. And now the text is behind me. So now how do we get back the background? Well, the obvious thing to do is to simply duplicate this clip that we have over here. Now, luckily for me, I have it saved as a zone over here, so I can just grab the video part of it, drag it in, and we now have the background again. So there we have it for this. Now, this is not the only thing you can do with the shape alpha that we just created. So let's say we wanted to apply an effect only to the selection or to the invert of the selection. So everything that's not selected to do. So if we go inside of the effects panel and look for mask, you also have a shape alpha mask. So we can drag in the shape alpha mask. You can see it's also going to use the mask that we've created. Let me see, which clip am I on? Am I on the right clip? No, I'm on the wrong clip. Hold up. I think I added it to the clip in the project, and there we go. So, yeah, so if we look for shape alpha mask, let me go ahead and disable this, collapse. I'll put in the shape alpha mask. Then we can put a mask apply at the bottom. And now, if, for those of you who are familiar with this, this is the mask sandwich. Anything that goes in between those two will only apply to our selection. So you can see there's a little offset here, and I found that just clicking on the mask again fixes it. My guess is that it's something to do with synchronization, so you just click on it again and it will fix it. And there you go. You can now apply the changes just to your subject. I'm really 
butchering uh, the subject here. But yeah, so that's another thing that you can do with the Shape Alpha Mask. And one more thing is, where is it? It's Operation. So it's going to be Alpha Operations. You can put this after the Shape Alpha. And now we can do several things such as Shave. So let's zoom in here on the monitor a bit and move it over here. So uh, let's see if I turn this off for a bit and switch to gray and red. So the red parts are where the mask is and the gray parts are the not the mask. So shave here kind of blurs the edges. So it's shaving off of it or reducing them, you could say. We can also grow soft so we can increase the size of the mask or the edges of the mask. We also have shrink soft like several options in here that you can use now to fine tune the edges of the mask. You can also simply blur it depending on what you're grabbing, increase the blur and you get like a little blur around the subject. Uh, besides all of that, you can also invert the mask. And there you have it. You would simply now apply all these changes to everything around the mask. So before I do this, let's go for image. Let's zoom back out. Okay, so I'll remove the alpha operation, uh, uncheck the invert. So inside of the shape alpha, you can also invert. You have these other things such as the softness and all. I've played around with a lot of these controls. I can't really tell you what they do concretely, but the offset, the offset and the out would be technically the, the position of the mask, you could say. So it recognizes the length of the clip and the segment that you're controlling. There's a Kofi link down in the description. If you want to support the channel, you can click on this playlist here to learn more about getting live. And thanks for watching.